Do you like orcs but not quite sure how to paint them? Well, today we're going over this guy, which is an orc I painted in a scheme that I think is quite achievable and replicatable across an entire army of multiple units, as well as leaving a decent amount of room for pushing those character models to that next level if we want to. So if you are interested in starting an orc army but not 100% sure on how to paint them, stick around and let's see if this video covers that for you. This is the mini painting page, my name's Ben and let's jump into it. Diving into our first step after the model is built is applying a zenithal prime technique across the model. This method will preserve the darker shadows while bringing out the model's more intricate details in a lighter white, allowing for brighter colours to go over the surface better later on down the line. After the primer has dried, we want to grab a bottle of Vallejo Brown Violet. This is going to be our base for the orc skin and as always, we can take our time working around and covering the entire surface of the orc with this rich colour. Make sure to get into all of the nooks and crannies of the skin, ensuring a solid foundation ready for the next steps. As always, we do want to take a little bit of care here. If we can just keep it onto the skin and avoid getting it in any other places by accident, it avoids us needing to go back and touch up these areas after the fact. Next, we want to take the original brown violet we were using and mix in some yellow green in roughly equal parts. And we're going to be using this for our first highlight. We can take a fine brush and carefully apply this thinned mix to all of the raised areas. We'll be looking for the bulging muscles, the prominent features from the faces, any raised areas like that. We can just give them a gradual coating of this mix to get a nice highlight on those raised areas. With the first round of highlights done, we can move on to the shading and to deepen the shadows and add a little bit more dimension. Let's blend in a touch of red into the previous highlight mix. This darker shade will help us to create those deeper shadows and define the musculature of our orc. Applying this watered down mix into the recesses and lower spacing sections of the model, we can concentrate on creating a nice smooth transition from the brighter to darker tones. Once that's done and dry, we can move on to enhancing the skin a little bit more with some final highlights. Here, we're going to be using straight yellow green with a little bit of dilution and a fine detail brush to work around and delicately accentuate all of the raised areas and edges across the model. Remember, generally you want to be pulling your brush towards the light source as this will help give a nice blend of colour as where you remove your brush from is where the most amount of paint will be left, giving you a nice blend from the shadows to this lightest highlight. With the skin done, let's move across and paint some of the leather. And here to start off, we want to use some English uniform from Vallejo. This is going to be the base for all of our leather areas. So with a steady hand, we can cover those trousers, packs, pouches, straps and anything else we want to be this colour until they're all nicely coated. Do take your time here to make sure that we get a nice coverage across them. We may even need to do a couple of coats, mainly because this is going to be the base for all of our leather tones going forward. Once we are happy with the coverage and that the English uniform is dry, let's blend this English uniform in with some cork brown from Vallejo in roughly a 50-50 mix, which we're going to use for our first round of highlights. Taking a slightly smaller brush, what we want to do is apply these highlights across all of the areas that aren't recessed. This is going to be things like the center of the straps and all of the raised sections of the trousers. This will hopefully help to make those areas pop and stand out a little bit more on the table, giving them that little bit more depth. In order to add a little bit of variety and texture to the model, let's take some different approaches when we're painting these leathers, such as the straps and the trousers. Apply a quick Reichland Flesh Shade wash across all of the straps and be sure to, as always, avoid any pooling and mop up any that is present. Once the wash is applied and has consequently dried, we can come in with a mix of golden brown and English uniform. Taking this colour, we can highlight all of the edges of the straps, making sure to catch both sides of each strap. Once we've gone round, working round, picking out all of these areas, we can then move across to the trousers. And for the trousers, what we want to do is highlight them with a mix of cork brown and warm flesh. This will hopefully showcase how the light hits the upper surfaces and edges of the trousers and adds a little bit of depth and visual interest to these areas. Finishing the trousers off, what we want to do is two layers of Agrax Earthshade wash, making sure to take time between each wash to ensure they dry completely. This will hopefully add a little bit more depth and richness to the model and if we go around and do two coats, hopefully we won't have much 
tidal mark pulling across the model. And it also adds a nice dirty feel to the trousers as if they've been running around in the muck, which they probably have to be fair. Moving across to tackle the jacket and the boots in black, we have a quick and effective technique that I quite like to use. To start off, we're going to be putting down a coat of Black Legion as the base coat. This will give us a nice sleek black look to start from. Once this is dry, what we can do is thin down some elf flesh and use this for the highlighting. The intention here is to create a weathered effect and weathered edges on this jacket and then smoother, broader, glossier patches for the boots. This will hopefully give them that different textured yet rugged and worn appearance. For the jacket, we want to focus on creating scratchy highlights on all of the edges and raised sections. This will aim to depict distress and wear, scuffing, things like that across the jacket. On the other hand, for the boots, we want to aim for a smoother, larger patched type of highlighting, going around and highlighting all of the larger areas, similar to how we tackled the muscles earlier. Once we've done this, we can go in with some known oil and give it a couple of washes. Again, here what we're going to want to do is give it a total of probably two washes and let them dry in between each coat and always mop up your pooling to avoid unsightly tidal marks. We can then move on to some of the finer details like the nails, the teeth and the skulls. There's always skulls. Start off with some flat earth as a mid brown base, making sure that we get a nice cover over all of these areas. Once it is dry and we have a nice coat, we can then use some warm flesh as a broad highlight, making sure to go around and shift most of the tones in this way, but making sure to also leave some of the brown in the recesses. This will help to add some definition and tonal shift to the models, as well as making sure things like the skulls, you get all of those details coming through once you've painted them with this lighter tone. Once that is done, we can go for some of an aged look, and to do this, what we want to do is create a wash using a mix roughly 50-50 of Agrax Earthshade and Nagarath Nightshade. We can then apply this wash to the skulls and all of these bone areas. This will create an aged and worn appearance. Finally, we can address the metal, which we've left to last so that if we end up making a mistake, we can just come in quickly with a flooded brush and whip away a lot of the mistake so that we don't have to worry about the rest of the paint job and trying to paint over metallics with other colors, which you can see quite often through the undercoats and things like that. So we just want to avoid it and leave the metallics until last. To do this, we want to take a bronze from Vallejo and put a nice coat across all of our metal parts. This will give us a consistent coat and we do want to make sure not to do it too thick so that we're obscuring any details. Once it's dry, we can come in with a mid silver color and do some broad highlights across all of the metallic areas. We don't just want to focus on the upper raised areas here. We want to apply a patchy silver highlight across all of the model while focusing more on those raised areas where the light would naturally hit more. Once we've done that, we can add a little bit of depth and richness by giving the metallic areas a nice wash. Here we're going to use a very dark purple, which we've created ourselves from a two to one mixed ratio of Known Oil and Nagrax Nightshade. Applying this all over the metals, we want to avoid pooling as always, and then let it dry. Once it is, we can come in with some final edge highlights, and we're going to use the silver paint we used earlier. In my case, the graphite mid silver color I used. Going around, taking our time to pick out all of the edges on all of the metallic areas and all of those metallic details. Once we've gone round and done all of that edge highlighting and it is completely dry, we're essentially done. If you've built the model in sub-assemblies, you just need to reassemble that model, potentially do some mid blending if you want to, and then slap it on the prettiest base that you can find. I've chosen to go for a lava themed base here. And if you're interested to see how that was done, I do suggest checking out this video. Otherwise, do remember to subscribe so that we can see you next time.